Okay, let's keep going. Is, we are but newcomers to this territory. We heard tell of a great martial artist, Master Dugu, who knows everything there is to know. Hence, we sought you out to ask for your guidance. <gasps> really? People said I know everything there is to know? But of course. We also heard that Master Dugu is a kind and virtuous swordsman who never turns away anyone who comes with questions. Great! <clears throat> So what do you wish to know? Nothing happens on this street that I don't know about. Huh? Now she's lying to a kid. So, Master Dugu, have you heard of one by the name of jur -E? Sure have. You mean that guy that all the grown-ups are talking about these days? I've heard many tales of jur -E. For example, um... Uh, I can't remember. Probably because it's nothing that important. I prefer stories about sword-fighting heroes! Oh, I can completely understand that. Then let me ask you this. Do you remember roughly when the grown-ups started talking about jur -E? Oh yeah, I know that! It was about two or three months ago. Before that, People always used to talk about jury in a kind of nasty tone of voice. But two or three months ago, suddenly everyone started to like him. Sometimes he gives me candies, so I'm glad that people are starting to like him now. Just as I thought. Huh? What do you mean? I mean, just as I thought, Master Dugu is indeed as kind and virtuous as the legends claim. <laughs> I'm not that great. Oh yeah, one other thing. These days, there's a lot of people I've never seen before talking about jury stories in the street. They seem like nice people. Oh, definitely. Great, so next time I see them, I'll say hi. And I guess I can share some of my candies with them too. Certainly. You can also tell my friend in Yenshang Tea House about what they're up to. I'm sure my friend would also like to say hi to them. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Well then, fare thee well, Master Dugu. Until we meet again. Any of that sounds strange to you? Strange? What was strange about it? Jiyi seems to have a great reputation. Uncle Soon and Uncle Gao spoke highly of him, and Dugu Shuo seems to like him too. True. But the issue is, where did his sudden celebrity come from? It almost seems too good to be true. Sudden? Too good to be true? What do you mean? So he returns cruelty with kindness and had to work to support his studies. These are the kinds of things that make someone well-known in their hometown. But Uncle Soon said even his friends who travel far and wide hear about him wherever they go. That's a little over the top, if you ask me. Do you remember what Dugu Shuo said about jur -E's stories? Clearly, they left him with a good impression of the guy. But beyond that, he wasn't interested in the details. That's the reaction I would expect from any normal person. Plus... There's the fact that all this praise of jur -E has only been happening within the last two or three months. His childhood, his studies, the thing with his neighbor, none of these are recent events. So why are these stories only going around now? When you put it like that, it is kinda strange. Of course, if that's all there was to it, I wouldn't look into it any further. jur -E was born into a poor family. 
Paying people to get his stories out there is within the rules of the game as far as I'm concerned. The problem is, do you remember what Uncle Gao said about him? He's stayed poor his whole life. Everything he's earned he's either spent on studying, traveling, or paying off debts. I don't think he has the mora to pay for a publicity campaign. Right. And that changes everything. It could mean a powerful faction is trying to gain influence over the Liu Ed Shixing. That's the worst case scenario. But all too often, the most pessimistic speculation turns out to be closest to the truth. Someone's trying to gain influence over the Qixing? That sounds serious. What should we do? Even if we asked Jiu Yi about it, surely there's no way he'd admit it. First, we need to find out who's supporting him. Don't worry, I've got a plan. Remember the current affairs and planning stage of the assessment? Since the successful candidate is duty-bound to implement their plan after taking office, their manifesto tells us their stance on key issues. Whoever is secretly helping Jer E must be seeking to benefit from his actions after his appointment. So, we should be able to find some hints in Jer E's manifesto on who we're dealing with. Come on, let's get back to Yen Shang Tea House. Jer E's manifesto covers a huge range of topics. Looking for details that don't add up will be like trying to find a needle in a haystack. I'll divide the reports into two piles. You take one, I'll take the other. When we're finished, we'll put our heads together. Officially, the assessment is already over, and I'll be expected to announce the results before long. So we have to get to the bottom of this as quickly as we can. Whatever else Uncle Tian might think of Jer E, the fact remains that he's one of his favorite students. Any evidence he's left is not going to be immediately obvious. We'll have to look carefully and think critically. Made any discoveries?
this reading is giving Paimon a headache. <sighs> Let's take a break. <laughs> uh, looks like I'm the first one back, as usual. Betcha. I visited all the commerce guilds and gathered a wealth of information. Every time they asked me to leave, but I always had another trick up my sleeve. Don't drag this out. Just tell us your findings. Yes, Lady Elon. To summarize my findings, most people who've had interactions with Qianwei will start out complaining about how proud and arrogant he is, but then go on to give a generally positive appraisal of him. The young master of the Feiyun Commerce Guild said that Qianwei appears arrogant, but he's very scrupulous in the way he works. Once he signs a contract with somebody, he treats them fairly regardless of their background. Who'd have thought? Is it possible that his reputation is fake? Is there any way you can check the accounts of the businesses under his name? In theory, that should be very difficult, but here's the thing. I asked around and found out that almost all of Qianwei's accounts are open to the public. Where he buys from and sells to should be confidential business information, but he doesn't seem interested in protecting it at all. Qianwei often sees business opportunities that others don't, but once he's made enough mora off of it, it's like he gets sick of it and releases all of his trade secrets. It's like he wants people to know that they still can't beat him, even if he shares all of his secrets. The fact that someone like that can still make Mora is pretty infuriating when you think about it. What a strange guy. It's like he's not doing business to make Mora, but instead... To validate his theories. No wonder his manifesto contains so many insights. It's all the result of his first-hand experimentation. I'm back! Huh? Ah, uh, how come you're here? Why do you think? Obviously, because I possess superior skills, and am always one step ahead of the competition. Well, when you're the competition, at least. You... Ugh, whatever. I'm not getting into an argument with you. If I hadn't had something else to take care of on the way, I would have been back long before you. Lady Yela, I have finished investigating Mingguan. Well, we're all ears. The Ministry of Civil Affairs says that Mingbua struggles to get his words out when he gets nervous, especially when he's chatting with strangers. But after a few days of getting to know him, you can pretty much have a normal conversation with him. On the whole, the feedback from the Ministry of Civil Affairs was very positive. He always considers the things that everyone else overlooks. In your opinion, was the Ministry of Civil Affairs appraisal of Mingbuo at all exaggerated? I don't believe so. Mingbuo is someone who has slowly but surely earned the reputation he has today. According to Miss Yu, the Ministry often gets Mingbuo to take a final look at projects before they're implemented. People feel much more confident in something if it has his stamp of approval. Oh, and also, there was once someone in the Ministry who was lying and cheating to try to advance their career. Mingbua gave them the scolding of a lifetime. Apparently, he can be terrifying when he loses his temper. I haven't seen it for myself, though. Whoa, that's hard to imagine. Like I said before, things are not always as they appear. Ah, so that's what you meant by that. Paimon's starting to get it now. Thank you both. You're free to go now. So, have you finished reading the manifesto? We still have a bit left. <laughs> hmm, I can't see any immediate problems looking at the individual entries. The only one that strikes me as a little unusual is the Chengshu Pool Redevelopment Plan. Chengshu Pool has always been home to many secrets. Plus, Ejdaha once wrought havoc there, so there are even more secrets buried deep underground. At some point, a rumor began to go around that there is great treasure buried beneath Qiangshu Pool. 
A long time ago, with the approval of the Qixing, a mining team conducted an exploratory excavation there. So, did they find any treasure? None. The ruin was completely impenetrable. The only way they could have gotten through the solid rock would have been by blowing it open with a special kind of explosive. The technology wasn't mature enough at that time, so the excavation project was shut down and the treasure became a mere legend. Jur E's manifesto focuses on solving problems, and this treasure hunt seems extremely risky. It seems out of step with the rest of his plans. Still, this one fact alone doesn't tell us much. Everyone wants to get their hands on this treasure. The treasure hoarders, the Fatui, even local Liyue factions. <laughs> Did you find anything? Excavation? Project? Treasure? Did we read anything similar in our half of the manifesto? Oh yeah! Juryi said the Blackcliff Forge workers should get right a first refusal if any suitable projects come up! Did he now? Well, that makes everything much clearer. So Juryi wants the Blackcliff Forge to excavate the treasure of Qiyunshu Pool. Does that mean the Blackcliff Forge is Juryi's secret supporter? No, not likely. I've looked into the Blackcliff Forge before. They aren't involved with any powerful factions at present. They do possess some specialized explosives, but it would seem more trouble than it's worth to put so many resources into a risky project like this. Still, since the clues are pointing toward the Blackcliff Forge, we should see where they lead. We may well find something new. This is the Black Cliff Forge. Let's look around for clues. Excuse me? What's that supposed to mean? Strange how? Uh, just, you know, stuff that when it happens, you think to yourself, huh, that was weird. Huh? I don't think we're going to get anywhere asking questions like that. Let's just take a look around. back it looks like a ledger but it seems they also use it as a site log we don't know who wrote it but it's interesting don't you think these newcomers who could have sent them you think they're suspicious yes look it says right there one of them's already been promoted to team leader at this rate by the time the Qing Shu pool redevelopment plan is ready to roll They'll be the technical backbone of the team. That'll give them the chance to take a lot of liberties. They can copy any secret texts or steal any treasure they find underground. Imagine if we didn't suspect anything. By the time Jur E recommends the Blackcliff Forge for the excavation project, at most we would maybe do a fresh background check on the place. No red flags if all they did was change some key staff. And even if we decided to vet the staff individually, 
They'd have had more than enough time by then to come up with fake identities. That's the advantage of planning this far in advance. <laughs> it was a clever move. When you put it like that, it all makes sense. If we hadn't found this out, someone else would have stolen the treasure. So, who's really behind all this? That's a question for the newcomers. But let's start with that worker over there for now. Uh, excuse us. We want to ask you about the newcomers. <sighs> you want them to teach you or something? I gotta say, these newcomers are in tip-top shape. Fast learners, too. They're picking up all the skills unbelievably fast. My only complaint is that they're always going out drinking at night, but they never let us join them. I guess they just need some time to adjust. I'm sure we'll get to know each other over time. <laughs> they go out drinking. This area isn't exactly renowned for the nightlife. I'm guessing it's a long trip to the nearest tavern. You got that right. They tell me they go all the way back to Liwe Harbor to drink at Wanmin Restaurant. It rained after work today, so they actually stuck around at the site for a while. But as soon as the rain stopped, they went out drinking again right away. Hey, you're only young once, right? I say, if they can hack it, let them at it. <laughs> Interesting. Let's go talk somewhere else. Looks like our hunch was on the Mora. These newcomers are very suspicious. Drinking in Liyue Harbor, huh? <laughs> Some cover story. I'll wager they've been going to intelligence updates. Good thing it rained today. It means they'll leave footprints. I doubt they'd give themselves away that easily, but... Let's follow them and try our luck. Just as I thought. They didn't go to Liyue Harbor. They went that way. The footprints stop here. But, judging from the direction, I'm guessing their destination was that abandoned house. Looks like we were too late. This has got to be where the newcomers rendezvous with whoever they're working for. But all the evidence has been destroyed. Look at these ashes. 
Someone was burning documents not long before we arrived. Could there be anything left? Maybe the wind could have blown the fire out before everything was finished burning. The odds of that are very slim. It's practically impossible. I've checked. All the paper's been burned. There's only ash left now. Why don't we wait for them back at the Black Cliff Forge? They've got to go back there sooner or later. We can't count on that. Clearly they were based here at one point, but it's mysteriously abandoned now. To me, that says that whoever's behind this has moved them somewhere else to throw our investigation off course. Darn! Guess this is where our trail runs cold. Make no mistake, the purpose of our trip wasn't to find any solid evidence. We just need to figure out who's behind Jur E. I smelled something peculiar the moment I came in. Those newcomers probably thought they'd be safe as long as they burned the letters. But what they failed to consider is that paper and ink from different regions produce different odors when they're burned. Really? <laughs> I would can't smell anything, do you? There is a certain place with a freezing cold climate, where there's nothing but ice as far as the eye can see. Some wealthy people there put floral fragrance in their ink as a way of injecting a little romance into their writing. When that fragrant ink is burned, this is the exact odor that it leaves behind. Exactly. The evidence will soon be blown away by the wind, so it's nothing we can arrest anyone with. But it's all I need. Now I know who we're dealing with. I can plan our next move. Lady Yelon! Oh, thank goodness I finally found you! I thought I'd never see you again! Um... Who are you? Don't be alarmed. This is Upei. He's Wen Yuan and Shang Hua's colleague. I sent him to look into Jur Yi's regular contacts. Since Jur Yi likes fishing, Upei thought he might know some of the fishermen and sailors, so he took a boat out to sea to ask around. I left him a note at Yen Shang Tea House telling him to look for me at Black Cliff Forge when he got back. If there'd been an ambush waiting for us there, it means we'd have had some backup. So, what did you find out at sea? Uh, forgive my incompetence. I'm afraid I've come up empty-handed. I asked all the fishermen multiple times, but none of them had any interactions with Jury before. Then the waves got so choppy I ended up falling overboard. Fortunately, someone managed to drag me out. When I got back, I heard that you'd gone to Black Cliff Forge and might need backup, so I went straight there as fast as I could. Didn't even stop to change my clothes. Hmm. Huh. Well, Uncle Tien said that Jury once bought a recipe from one of the fishermen. Did you hear anything about that at all? What? That's news to me. No, that's not possible. It's absolutely not possible. Lady Yelan, I'm telling you, I spoke to every single fisherman out there, and none of them mentioned anything about a recipe. Interesting. Then I wonder how that even more wonderful fish soup came about. Fish soup? What fish soup? Nothing. Our priority right now is to find a way to get our hands on some solid evidence. Well, any suggestions? Hmm, not a bad idea. Upe, what do you think? Honestly, I've already tried following Jury, but the guy's too cautious. Never meets with anyone suspicious. Okay, so tailing's out. No, we'll still need to tail him. But first, we need to do some groundwork. Groundwork? When you've worked in intelligence for a long time, you'll understand that no one can stay on high alert forever. Especially when he thinks he's about to win. Tomorrow morning, I'll announce his victory at your high pavilion. Take a guess what you think he'll do next. Be sure to arrive on time. You won't want to miss the show. <laughs>